everybody, welcome to Crazy Tech Lab and boy do I have a video for you today because Intel recently asked me, Anthony, we want you to build an absolutely insane mini ITX PC to showcase our latest and future processors. We've got a 13900K right here. And of course, being the mini ITX and small form factor fanboy that I am, how could I refuse? Now, this is a build with a difference though, because what we wanted to achieve is building the most insane mini ITX PC in a very, very small space, one that's great at showcasing the hardware inside, but I had free range of all the components other than the processor, of course, but if I was going for a super high end PC, the 13900K would be on my short list. Anyway, we have a full water cooling system here that's going to be water cooling the CPU and our graphics card of choice, which is of course an RTX 4090. It's by far and away the most powerful graphics card there, out there right now. We have two 280 millimeter radiators here, courtesy of AlphaCool. That is much more than I've seen in most mini ITX PCs out there and more than I've seen fitted in the case that I've uh, chosen today that I'll be revealing in a minute. We also have 12 terabytes of M.2 NVMe storage. And that is the reason why I chose the motherboard that we're gonna be using in this build, which is the MSI MPG Z790i Edge Wi-Fi. We also have Cooler Master's 850 watt SFX power supply. We've got components from EK water blocks as well, such as the chrome tubing that we've got down the front here. We've got the full cover water block for the Founders Edition RTX 4090 that we've got. We also have a bit of hardware that I've been really looking forward to using for a long time, which is the EK combined pump reservoir and a water block. So we're gonna be using that in this build as well. We also have a distro plate that we're gonna be using in our case and a whole load of other bits besides. Now, this video is gonna be one of several videos that we're gonna be doing on this build for the simple reason it is way too complicated to be doing in a single video because we are gonna be doing 3D printing, we are gonna be spray painting, we are gonna be using a vinyl cutter, we are gonna be completely ripping out the interior of the case that we have chosen to build something completely custom. So even if you do have this case, you won't be able to fit all the hardware that we've got here inside without some extensive modifications, but hopefully you'll find this video a bit of fun, informative and entertaining. So don't forget to like, comment and subscribe to my channel. Your subscription just means that you are showing your support for my channel and also you will be notified if you turn on the bell icon when I upload the future videos where I'll be showing you the customization that I'll be doing to the case as well as the system build videos. So don't forget to like and comment on this video as well. I love hearing what you guys think of my videos and also what do you think of the hardware choice that we got here today? Would you change anything? So love hearing about what you guys are getting up to in the comments. So today what we'll be doing is running through all of the components here explaining why I chose them, doing a quick unboxing and just running through a quick series of just general looking at the products and why I chose them and seeing what they're about. First though, we have to talk about the case. Now, a lot of you will be finding it, well, will know the case already. It's nothing new or fancy or anything like that. I'm just gonna make a bit of room here so we can actually have a proper showcasing. Surprise. Now, I obviously had free range with this build, so there were a whole bunch of cases that I could have used, but this case fitted the bill for a couple of reasons, which I will reveal now, as well as the case. So, it is the Cooler Master NR200P. Not the not the max version of the case, this case, this is the, the standard version of the case. Now, I picked this case for a number of reasons. First and foremost, I wanted to be able to sit a radiator in the top and the base of the case, and this is one of the very few mini ITX cases that can actually do that. With a bit of modification, namely going sandwich style in the case, so the motherboard, instead of sitting on the, on the far side, if I just flip the case around, and the motherboard tray currently is here, I think, or that side. <laughs> so the motherboard tray is here. I will be moving it to the center of the case. So we have the graphics card on one side and motherboard on the other. That frees up the whole of the roof of the case to house a radiator in the roof and also the base of the case as well. So we can fit a radiator down here. Now there are other cases that you can fit dual radiators in. There are plenty of options out there. The Meshlicious, for example, that uh, can do two 280 millimeter radiators with a few extra components. 
But the trouble is when you do that with another case or most other cases that I found, you end up obscuring most of your hardware. And this is, this is gonna be a showcase. Intel wants to take it to events in the UK later this year. So I couldn't have that. I had to have a case that would allow me to showcase all of the hardware inside with the radiators kind of out of sight and not blocking any of the hardware. So that is another reason why I chose this case. And also it's very, very easy to work with. A lot of the components are screwed together. It's very easy to dismantle and it has a nice big front area because I'm gonna be spray painting it inside and out. So I don't want it to be all mesh. Mesh does aid cooling, but we're gonna have a top to bottom cooling arrangement here. So it doesn't really matter what's going on at the front. That's not really gonna help airflow and it doesn't help in the, in the case of the Cooler Master NR200P anyway. So, this is it for my uh, my component choice. We're gonna run through a few of the components now. We've done the case and um, I'd love to know if you suggest any other cases or whether if you were building this PC, what other cases would you be choosing out there? So thanks for Intel for sponsoring today's video. Let's have a quick roundup of the hardware that we're gonna be using and then I need to crack on with the customization and I'll be back very, very soon with a video along those lines. So let's crack on. So we are gonna take a quick run round now and look at some of the hardware that we've chosen. So this is the motherboard that I've chosen for the simple reason that it can fit three M.2 SSDs in its M.2 slots. So the reason why we've gone for these particular ones is just because they're, they're you know, they're pretty good value, the crucial SSDs, but we've gone for the uh, two PCI Express 4 and one PCI Express 3 SSD, and that might seem odd, but it's purely down to the limitations of the motherboard. So while it can fit three, um, there's no PCI Express 5 support on the MPG uh, Z790i Edge Wi-Fi. But to be honest, if I was building an absolutely insane mini ITX PC, I would favor more storage over um, PCI Express 5 support. PCI Express 5 support, sure, you'll get like 10,000 megabytes a second, but if you, can, if you can only fit, you know, seven or eight terabytes in your PC versus 12 that we've got here, I know what which one I which uh, configuration I would pick. So the uh, third slot on the motherboard only supports PCI Express 3. So that's why we've gone for the Crucial P3 and the Crucial P3 Plus for the other two SSDs. So an absolutely insane amount of storage in this system. And I don't think I've, I've seen any other SSD or any other uh, mini ITX systems with 12 terabytes of storage. So let's check out some other components, get those to one side. Now, the cooling basically rests on using some pretty hefty radiators. After all, we are gonna be water cooling the RTX 4090 and the Intel Core i9-13900K here. So I don't really wanna to have to undervolt things too much and I don't wanna have the fans, especially running at high speeds to deal with the heat load. So what I'm gonna be doing is modifying the case to fit two 280 millimeter radiators in here. Now, these are a radiator with a difference. They are the Alpha Cool ST20, which means that they are the slim version. Now, slim to me isn't 30 millimeters thick. That's what I would call a half height radiator. These are actually properly slim. So they are just 20 millimeters thick, but they are still 20, uh, 280 millimeter radiators. So they have a huge amount of cooling. So we're gonna be using two of those in the case and to fit those and a, a row of fans on each of them we are going to be using these bad boys here so these are the only rgb 140 millimeter slim fans that i know of they are the johnsbo hf 1415s and uh, i think arctic makes a uh, 14 millimeter slim fan but these are the only rgb ones that i know they're really good quality great airflow and we're going to be using four of them two on each radiator and uh, two in the roof and two in the base, of course. So other components, we have 32 gigabytes of Corsair Vengeance RGB DDR5 memory. Don't really need more than that and 6,000 megahertz is more than enough for this build. We mentioned earlier that we have the uh, distro plate and that is in the form of the Fantex Glacier D120. So this is like a, a universal distro plate and uh, it can fit in any 120 millimeter fan mount. So that is gonna be a super cool addition there. We also have the Cooler Master V850 SFX Gold power supply. And uh, this is hopefully gonna come with a set of cable mod cables. They are in the post as we speak, along with the 
special connector that you need, the 16 pin connector that you need for the RTX 4090 as well. So Cable Mod is shipping those over. Now, something that I know a lot of you in the, watching this video will be super interested to see is this thing here, the EK Quantum Velocity. And it is the, let me just read off the, the name here. It is the EK Quantum Velocity 2 DDC 4.2 PWM DRGB. <laughs> so this is only compatible with LGA 1700. And if you wanna see what it looks like, well, I just happen to have it out of the box. So here it is. This is the centerpiece of our build really, apart from the processor, of course. Um, but it is a combined pump water block and reservoir all in one so you don't need to fit a separate reservoir or anything like that in this case and that is going to save a huge amount of space and make plumbing everything in a huge amount easier plumbing everything in or talking about plumbing everything in we have the brand new micro fittings from ek so these things are absolutely amazing for mini itx builds they're just shorter they don't take up as much height, so if you're trying to squeeze a lot of stuff into a small space with your water cooling system, these things are an absolute godsend, and I highly recommend that you check them out if you're building a water-cooled Mini ITX PC. So that is pretty much it for the hardware. We've just got the EK Founders Edition uh, water block for our RTX 4090, and we also have some super sexy chrome tubing. So we are gonna be using that in this build with EK's fittings to hook up everything together. And we are gonna be housing it all in this bad boy here, the Cooler Master NR200P. Finally, we have the Core i9-13900K, but we will maybe, perhaps, be using some future processors in this build as well. So I'm sure most of you out there have heard the rumors about certain 14th gen CPUs. Well, hopefully we might be able to drop one of those in to this PC at some point. For now, we're using the monster that is the Core i9-13900K. So that's pretty much it for the hardware roundup today. And I'm just gonna sign off. So that's it for this insane build today. And as I mentioned, I will be back very, very soon to give you guys an update basically on the customization. Hopefully we'll have the case painted by then. And then in the following videos, we will continue the system build with some 3D printing, fitting all the hardware inside and sorting out the cooling system as well. So thanks for watching today. Exciting times ahead. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe and I will catch you soon.